Let's go ahead and take a look at another example of a for each loop. I'm going to jump back to my resource pack directory and let's go ahead and open up the sixth step, which is called for each output as table. Go ahead and copy the entire code and paste it over the code that's in your test.php file and save it. So note that our code is a bit longer here. We have to scroll down, but don't be daunted. No matter how long a script is, we can always start at the top and work our way down line by line and get an understanding of what's going on. So first of all, what we have is an array being defined here as the people variable. Notice that this is the same multi-dimensional array that we used in an earlier example. We have three different people and we have data about each person. Now what we're going to do in this for each loop is loop through all of this data and then output it as a table. Let's go ahead and see it in the browser so you know what I'm talking about. I'm going to jump back to the browser and refresh. And you see that across the top, we have column names, name, birth year, favorite band, shoe size. And then each row represents a person and displays their data. Okay, I'm going to jump back to the editor. After we've defined our people variable, we're going to initialize our output variable. And now we have our for each loop. So we're going to loop through each item in the people array as, now that you've seen this construct before, but this next part is a little different than our other for each loop. Instead of having just one item, we have two items. But you've seen this equal sign right arrow before when we assign an index to a value. So you see birth year, and then we have that symbol, and then the value. And a similar thing is happening here, except what we're doing is breaking apart the variable into the key and the value. In this case, the key is the name of the person, so we're giving it the variable name name, and then the value are the details in an array of the person. So we're calling that details. As we go through each item, we're going to run through this code here. So this will run three times. Now in previous videos, we've used something called concatenation to bring multiple strings together. And we do so by using a period. In this case, what we're doing is using some shorthand, which is a period equal sign. And what this says is that we want this variable to equal this variable plus this new content. So we could rewrite this by removing this period and doing an equal sign and then typing output and then a period. The way that we have the code though, I'm just going to undo that, is a little bit simpler. Or as you'll find programmers calling something like this, it's more elegant because it reduces redundancy. It eliminates the need to use the output variable more than once. So the first time we run through this loop, output will be empty and what we're going to do is add this table row to it. Each table cell includes a different piece of data. The first one is the name. Now again, this is the key, which is the name here in our people array. And then our additional table cells show some different details. And the way we access those details is by using the key that's associated with the value that we want to display. So in a previous video, we looked at how to grab the values of an array by using a string as a key. And so that's what we're doing here. We're grabbing the birth year key, which will align with this number here. We're grabbing the fave band key, which will align with this item here. And then the shoe size, which is this item here. By the time this for each loop runs through each of the items in the people array, we'll have three rows in a table, but we won't have any table tags wrapped around it. So we need to make sure we're going to finish up this HTML to display it properly in the browser. So I'm going to scroll down here. And what we're going to do here is check to see if the output is empty. Now we're using an if statement because what we're doing is checking for a condition. And if it's true, we're going to do something. In previous videos, we used the comparison operator that was two equal signs in order to check whether the value on the left side was equal to the value on the right side. In this case, we're doing something which is an exclamation mark equal sign, which says doesn't equal. Now you'll see this exclamation mark show up a number of times throughout the code that we use throughout the series. It's a negation. So it's basically saying the opposite of whatever follows it. So if output doesn't equal nothing, then we're going to go ahead and run this code in here. Now the reason we're adding this check is because we're future proofing our code. We're anticipating the idea that the data that's up here may change over time. Now this is a static array. But in future videos, we're going to get this data from somewhere else, and we might not know if there's going to be any data in it at all. I'm going to scroll back down here, 
And so we're doing a check to see if there is any data. If the data exists, then we'll have some output at this point. And so we can wrap some HTML around our table rows in order to complete it. So what we're saying is, if the output isn't empty, we're going to reset the output variable to be an HTML table with a new table row that includes table headings for each of the pieces of data. We're going to end the table row, and then we're going to add our additional rows that were created through the for each loop, and then end our table with a closing HTML table tag. But what happens if we don't have any output? Well, what we're doing is adding an else statement here, which will run if that output variable is empty. And we're going to set the output variable to say, it looks like we don't have any data to display. And our last step then is printing out this output variable. If you're following along with these examples by typing them out, it's a common mistake to miss this last bit where we actually print the variable to the screen. So if you find you're not seeing any output at all in the browser, make sure that you're actually outputting it at the end of the script. So let's jump back to the browser and take a look at this again. So our for each loop built these three rows, and then because those rows existed, then our script did an if statement to wrap around a full HTML table tag. Now let's go ahead and make our data empty. I'm going to jump back to the editor, and let's go ahead and make this people array empty. We're just removing everything that's in the middle here, and we'll save it. Let's jump back to the browser and refresh, and it shows us it looks like we don't have any data to display. 